this is what it sounded like when this 2010 Corolla wouldn't start. A meter shows that the battery is good. Let's see what the starter does. Pulled out of the car and connected to the car wiring. So that sound that we heard is this. The solenoid coming out but the uh, starter motor itself not engaging. Now we're bench testing the starter directly with a good battery. First the solenoid and uh, I've got a switch in there and it's working perfectly fine. Now I wired up the battery plus directly to the starter and it also is working perfectly fine. So we're going to have to look elsewhere for the problem here. It's not the starter, it's a perfectly good starter. So let's have another look at some other areas of concern. Okay, one other thing that goes on with this thing I noticed is when you turn the headlights on with the ignition off, they don't come on. You hear a buzzing, like a clicking, and when I went to the fuse box, all I could find here is like 7.5 volts, 7.6. Like so there's some sort of general electrical problem here, but one part that I really like to look at is the starter relay. And this thing's not that easy to get at on this car. Let's go have a look at it. The relay is in a block behind the heater and air conditioning controls. So many of these panel pieces have to come out, just pull them apart, they're kind of modular, they snap into place. The radio is four bolts. Once you get that out of the way, there you can see it. It's that little black unit with two 10 millimeter screws there. The relay center is in there. And again, these things just pop apart, separating the heater controls for a little bit better access. And you don't have to really take all these pieces out, just kind of set them aside. I left as much wired as I could. Okay, there comes the uh, relay unit. And there's the starter relay, the purple one in the corner. Okay, we pulled it out and we're going to test it. And also test the sockets that it plugs into for the correct voltages. So let's identify these uh, plugs first. Um, on this side, they're silver colored. That's the control voltage coming through the key switch. Also a neutral safety switch. This is the ground side of the coil. And moving on to the larger lugs, that's 12.5. That's the battery voltage through a fuse to go to the solenoid and that goes out to the solenoid right there that last one. I made up a spade test probe to go into the sockets and look for voltage. Okay so we'll take our little test clip put it on the this pin right here, the socket right here. So for a ground I'm using this tube up here, the steel tube. Okay now turning the ignition switch 11.3 volts into this. Okay, notice how this voltage is unstable here. It's going down, going down each time I do this. It's kind of an indicator of, a, of an electrical ground issue. So next we're checking the power to the solenoid. 12.5. That's solid. That's battery voltage, which it should be. Now as we turn this, look, we're dropping voltage into the start position. We're dropping down to 12.5, 12.05. I'm testing this relay and I've got a little simple circuit. I've got a 12 volt signal coming in here on the coil. This will be coming from a DC power supply. And then the load side, the contact side of the relay, I've cooked up to a battery. 12 volt DC battery. That's on one of these two. And the other one, the other contact is going to a test light here. The other end of the test light to the ground on the battery. So then we turn on the power and the light comes on, indicating that the relay is working. You can hear a little click here. See? Let's have a look at these grounds. Here's a major engine ground, left to front corner. There's a chassis ground that goes around the back. Those look okay. Down here on the transmission is another major ground. You can see it right there. Now we follow this one and it comes around the battery to the other side of the battery. And here at last are some suspicious rusty looking bolts. We're going to get our meter on there and see what we can get. We should have like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohms there between those two chassis grounds. And we're getting in the mega range and then if we really 
push our probes in hard, we can get us 50 ohms. Again, this should be a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohms connection right here. So we're going to have to clean this up. The weak point here is where this washer meets the lug because there's paint down there. And this lug can't make contact, electrical contact, through the paint. So even if the threads of the screw are making contact down there, the lug itself is floating on top of on top of paint and on the other side corrosion from this washer. So we're going to remove some of the paint from the contact points to improve our connections here. So what I'm doing now with a knife, a little exacto knife, is I'm making sure there's no paint on those raised portions. I want good contact there. So I'm going to scrape that off there on all eight of them. There we have the paint scraped off those contact points. Okay, we're adding a lock washer and a washer to this M6 by one coarse thread, uh, 16 millimeters long bolt putting in here, and it will be torqued. Okay, I want this snug. And going anywhere. Okay, where we had 50 before, down here off the battery, 0.1. Okay, there's our reworked connections. Now we're going to test the starter with this before we put it back in. Okay, hit it. Oh. Hit it. Okay. Thanks for watching.